As you've surely noticed, abuse and trauma greatly reduce your brain functioning. Every time you go through an experience like that, the effects get compounded. Maybe you notice that you're having some difficulties managing your life now, managing tasks and responsibilities at work, at home, in your personal life, with your children. In this video, I'm going to talk about executive functioning skills. I'm going to talk about what they are specifically. Then I'm going to give you seven ways to get functional again. That way you can avoid the anxiety, frustration, panic, paralysis, procrastination, and overwhelm that can happen when your executive function isn't working so well. So the executive function is handled by the frontal lobe of your brain. This is different than the brain changes that we've talked about in the limbic system, like the amygdala and the hippocampus. I'll put a link up here for you to check out that video if you're curious about those things. But in this video, we're going to talk about the executive function, which is something else. Executive function manages skills in your life, such as organizing things, paying attention, focusing, having self-control, time management, planning for projects in the future, motivation, achieving your goals, what's called working memory, which is mostly like memorizing things and being able to recite them. Your executive function helps you juggle many things at once, which some people call multitasking, and it also helps you to avoid distractions. It helps you with problem solving, with prioritizing tasks that you need to do, and also adjusting for surprises because life is full of surprises. Sometimes we have things all planned out and then other things happen, other things show up, and we have to be able to adjust for those. So these are some examples of what the executive function manages in your life. So now I want to give you seven ways that you can help yourself get functional again after abuse. The first one is to create a calendar. I like using iCal on my computer that syncs with my iPhone. It has notifications. So whatever system you're using, see what kind of electronic calendar you can use. Then what you want to do is block chunks of time. And you want to set up your calendar every week before the week starts. And every week you have chunks of time allotted for all your activities. Now I mean literally everything. Because when your executive function isn't working, you don't remember how to manage your time. Meaning you don't remember how to manage yourself in time because we really can't manage time. We can only manage ourselves in time. So you're gonna put on there what time you have to take a shower and that's a block of time for you to get ready. Why? Because if you don't do that and your phone doesn't let you know it's time to take a shower, you're going to be late. You're going to be late for work. You're going to be late for a meeting. You're going to be late for something you have to do because you're just going to tell yourself, I'll do just one more thing. Or you're going to get distracted with something else. When you shower, when you do self-care things, when you have work projects, when you have kids activities, um, pet activities, grocery shopping, cooking, you're literally planning everything out on that calendar. And then your phone, if you're not next to your computer, your phone is always notifying you what you're on task for at that moment. I like to make those little blocks color coordinated too. So like self-care is purple, personal stuff is red, anything to do with managing money is green, anything to do with food is yellow. So you pick the colors, but having those colors I find is also helpful for keeping me really present on what's going on right now and what I'm supposed to be focused on. Creating a calendar like this, maintaining it regularly, following it, helps you so much in eliminating decision fatigue. This is what Dr. Daniel Amen talks about. Every time you're like, what should I be doing now? What am I supposed to be doing now? First of all, that's exhausting to your brain. You're wasting a lot of energy thinking about that. If you have a calendar, you simply look, ah, oh, it's two o'clock, what am I doing right now? I'm recording videos right now. So what are you supposed to be doing at what time? And that's going to set your, your brain energy free for something else that you can use it for. It's also going to help you so that you don't just walk around confused all day. It's going to help you set boundaries and prioritize your time. So you're moving through your day, you're following your calendar, and an email comes in, or a phone call, or a text message, or someone's at the door, and there's an invitation to distract you from what you need to work on. It's someone else and their issues or whatever else they have going on, and they want your time and energy. But 
if you have a calendar and you know, okay, right now is not the time for me to answer that. Right now is the time for me to get this project done. And then, oh, it looks like I have free time after 7 p.m. That would be a great time to catch up with my friend, to handle that thing or the other thing. So this really helps you in prioritizing because you can get easily distracted when your mind is in that fog. You know, and that calendar makes the boundaries easier. So if you're having difficulty saying no and setting boundaries, this is a really easy way to do that. I'm sorry, I can't, you know, talk to you right now. I need to be doing this. Or you simply tell yourself, because remember, boundaries are first and foremost with ourselves. You simply tell yourself, I'm not going to read or, or answer that email right now because I have to get this stuff done. If not, you're going to be wandering through your day doing all kinds of stuff and wondering why you didn't get anything done and wondering what you did even get done that day. And so with your calendar, that's all very easy. The second tip is to create a daily to-do list. So I like Evernote. This is a free app. I might pay a little bit more, I think, to get some kind of upgrade, but I'm pretty sure there's a free version. And the great thing about Evernote is it automatically, like in the moment, syncs with all your devices. So you can be working on an Evernote text file on your computer, and then you swap over to your phone and it's right there. You don't have to wait to send a file or uh, update anything. Like it's all right there in real time updated for you. So I have this one Evernote text every week. That's my to-do list. And so at the very top of that list are ongoing projects, things that are still going on that just more things long term that need to happen and or not yet projects like things that need to get done but I either don't have something that I need or I'm waiting for a piece of mail or I'm waiting from a contact from someone something that I can't work on just yet but it needs to get done I'm gonna put it on that list just so I don't lose track of it because if it's not on the list I could easily forget about that so at the top I have those ongoing and not yet things and then underneath that I have every day of the week and Evernote is awesome because it puts these little boxes and you can check the box. And I love that. It's so satisfying to check boxes off your to-do list. And so Monday, you know, all the tasks I need to get down Monday. So is that superfluous to your calendar? Maybe kind of because your calendar has everything blocked out. But I find personally this helps me a lot to have this double system and to check in every day because sometimes I may need to adjust my times Maybe I need to, to juggle something around. Maybe something new comes across my plate that actually is a priority and I actually really need to work that into my day somehow. But having that to-do list is just really helpful because I'm, I'm checking off those boxes. And then maybe I finish a task early and I have like 30 minutes or something. So instead of mindlessly going to like some social media site and wasting a bunch of time or doing whatever I might be doing to waste time, I go to my to-do list and I'm like, is there anything I could bang off this list really quickly before that next activity comes up? And if there is, then I get it done and I check that off my list. My list. And I find that is so, so helpful for productivity, for getting things done. And man, it helps me so much to sleep at night too, because I used to get the kind of insomnia where I would fall asleep usually, but then I would wake up in the middle of the night thinking about something I needed to do, or I should have you know, gotten done already, or it was overdue, or the deadline is coming. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff when I have my to-do list, when I have my calendar, because it's all there. And the point is, it's all there, so it's gonna get done. If you don't put it on there, it's not gonna get done, and it might haunt you in your sleep. So this is gonna help you sleep better. It's gonna help to reduce the anxiety that you feel on the daily. Um, in those early stages of PTSD, you might relate to this. This is how I felt. If I had more than say two or three things to do that day, I was in full panic mode in the morning. I mean, I had still the whole day ahead of me, but my brain could only see the panic of, oh my God, I gotta get done, I gotta get done, I got so much to do today. And it really wasn't that much but it was that much for my brain to manage at that time. So it was just incredibly overwhelming. And I was just always feeling like I was gonna run out of time. I just wasn't gonna get things done. I think that's coming from the PTSD. So this really helped me a lot to get organized like that. It can relieve some of my anxiety. You know, your memory might not be working as well. That's a different thing. That's part of the amygdala hippocampus connection from that other video I mentioned. But because your memory could be failing you, you might be forgetting things that you have to get done. Like you might even remember things in the morning and then totally forget later. But if it's written down, you're not gonna forget it. And then you can relieve yourself of that anxiety burden, knowing that you have that and knowing that you have a calendar with your times all blocked out. And you can tell yourself in that irrational voice in your head, I have plenty of time today to get those things done. 
everything's okay, there's no reason to panic. You know, and checking those things off your to-do list is gonna help build momentum, is gonna help you feel a sense of accomplishment, which is really important after going through lots of experiences where you felt powerless, you felt helpless, you felt like, you know, that low self-esteem, like you just couldn't have any kind of positive effect in your life. This gives you actual way to measure that and to get it done. Number three is organize your space. So that's your space at home, your space at work, if those are separate spaces, that's your car if you have a vehicle. This I like to work into my morning routine. So what I like to do as part of my morning routine, as soon as I wake up, like I'm fixing the bed, I'm straightening up my room, did I leave any glasses there last night? Did I leave anything else that needs to go to the kitchen? Is there you know, anything that needs to be brought into there? I go to the kitchen, did I leave any dishes the night before? I'm gonna clean those up real quick to get them out the way. You know, I'm gonna fix the blanket that I left here the night before, snuggling with Venus watching Netflix. I'm gonna get my space all tidied up, I'm gonna go to my office, I'm gonna straighten the paperwork, the files, I'm gonna put things in the order that I need them that day. I'm gonna get rid of anything that's clutter, that's just clouding my mind and getting in the way because I function so much better when my stuff is organized. You know, I'm not wasting time looking for stuff. I'm not sitting there feeling all clouded and foggy because I can't see through all the crap in my house or my office or on my desk. It's just so helpful for everything, but especially for that clarity of mind and, and just the ease of which you're gonna flow through your day. And you don't have to worry about keeping up with everything during the day. You know, maybe you do the dishes then again at night, maybe just clean them up a little bit in the morning so you have a clean space to work in. And then you let things pile up during the day and then once, you know, at night after dinner, then you do them all at once and get those done. So really get yourself some organization, work that into your daily routine, especially your morning routine, so you really start the day off right. You know, maybe you're gonna make your bed, that kind of stuff, so that everything is looking great, that just creates this, this sense of like real confidence and self-esteem because you did something positive for yourself and it feels really different. It's also gonna help you to avoid the overwhelm. If you let that shit pile up over and over and over, days at a time, you're not even gonna to wanna to touch that because it's so overwhelming and it's such a mess. Don't let things get out of hand. And that's symbolic for life in general. You know, constantly be working at things little by little so that you're only spending five to 10 minutes in the morning organizing your stuff instead of hours on a weekend catching up from all the messes that you've left yourself during the week. Number four is monthly project planning. These are the projects that you need to get done that month. So at the end of the month, so I don't wait till the month starts, I start at the end of the month before, and I'll get out a blank paper, or what I really love is using a whiteboard, because you can take a picture of that to keep it, then refer to it, but you can always wipe it away and start over and erase it and all that. And creating some kind of organization for the project that you need to get done, or project that you absolutely need to get done that month. So that could be work, personal goals, family goals, body health goals, etc. Whatever those goals are that you're working on that month, those projects, every month you're gonna to come to this board, this planning place, whether it's a whiteboard or a piece of paper or a file in your computer that you prefer to use. So you wanna look at the overall project and then what you wanna do on, in that space on your paper and that file on the whiteboard is start to break that down into all the different tasks that need to take place or the milestones that need to take place as you're gonna be reaching the goals of those projects every month. So you're gonna chunk that down into manageable tasks. That way you're starting to take away the overwhelm of the overall projects. You know, so each one of those tasks, you're gonna then create a time frame for. And then you're gonna take that and put those onto your calendar. So you can already start to block out those chunks of time during that month. You know, Tuesdays is the best day for you to work on that project. Fridays is the best day for that project. Sundays are the best day for that project. So you're gonna to start to put all those details on your monthly calendar on your monthly and weekly calendar. And then as you come into each week, you're gonna add those into your weekly to-do list. So it's just copy, paste, copy, paste. You're not gonna be using a lot of brain power or energy. You're not gonna to have to be overthinking things because it's all right there for you. This is really going to help you achieve your monthly goals. Now keep in mind at the very beginning of your recovery, your goals might be very basic and simple. 
It might be that you're not functioning to work right now, and that's okay. A lot of us went through that. Maybe your main goals this month are much simpler. Maybe they're things like getting back into a daily hygiene habit because a lot of you probably know in those early stages of PTSD, hygiene can go out the door. You might not want to get yourself in the shower. You don't have any energy for that. You don't want to brush your teeth. You just, you don't clean up yourself or anything, you know? So maybe your goal is, okay, this month, I'm gonna start taking daily showers. I'm gonna start putting on makeup a little more. I'm gonna get a haircut, you know? You're gonna work on these things. You know, you're gonna maybe even set those reminders for yourself. You're gonna put this on your calendar and it's gonna remind you to brush your teeth. It's gonna remind you to get in the shower. It's gonna remind you to go take a walk because maybe, you know, part of this for you is, is getting back into fitness. So you wanna plan that 30 minute walk every day. So again, it, this could be very simple projects or they could be very big and elaborate projects, but this technique is really going to help you to manage those every month. Number five is meal planning. So this is another one that's great for a whiteboard. You could have a whiteboard in your kitchen. Depending where you live, you might even be able to find a kind of whiteboard that has every day of the week on it. And it's like an elongated one. My cousin uses this for meal planning. It's great, she's got four kids. It really helps her manage everything. And so on there, she plans every meal of every day. That helps her know what her grocery list is going to be. You know, because if you know what you're gonna be eating that week, when you go to the grocery store, you're not like, what was I supposed to buy? And then you go home and you're like, damn it, I forgot this and that and the other. So, you know, this really helps you to organize that. It helps making your grocery shopping easier. It helps you reaching your body and health goals because if that's something for you that got out of hand during the abuse, maybe you started with some emotional eating, you know, if you just go on idle, you're gonna go to the grocery store, you're gonna buy up all the processed junk food, you're gonna bring that home, you're gonna be starving, you wouldn't have thought of planning a meal, you'd be like, I'll just have some of that junk food because I'm so hungry right now. You're gonna make poor decisions that are not gonna help you reach your health and body goals. So you really wanna set that up, create a weekly meal plan for yourself. You know, if you're going to work and you want to take your lunch to work, then you know how to plan that out. You know how to plan your Tupperwares, how to plan, you know, the quantity of meals that you're making the night before that you're gonna take to work the next day. You're gonna have all those things organized in the refrigerator so you wake up that morning, all you gotta do is grab that and run. You're not gonna have to make a poor decision in the middle of the day and go to some fast food place and end up eating some garbage that your body doesn't wanna eat, that you really didn't wanna eat, you know, or starving, you know, because you know, the worst thing is like, when you're starving yourself during the day and you're pushing that off and pushing that off because you're busy or whatever you're doing, when you're really hungry, you're not thinking well. That's why the word hangry, right? Because you become like a different person when you're not, when, you're, when your body is, is deprived of food, your brain doesn't even work well in those cases. So when you have the meal plan, you have things planned out, you have your grocery list planned out, you have the two or how many ever days a week you need to go to the grocery store, you can plan all of that in advance, take off an enormous burden from having to think and wonder what you're gonna do. And then again, you're saving yourself from making really bad decisions that block you from reaching those health and body goals. It's also gonna help you stay in your budget because if you plan carefully your meals and you eat most of your meals at home and you bring most of your meals to work for lunch, you're gonna be saving yourself a lot of money than if you're going out, going out, going out because at the last minute, you just gotta grab something really quick. And that adds up a lot. So you're gonna find that you're gonna end up actually saving money when you take care of your meal planning. Number six is long-term goal getting. These are six month plus goals. Now in the early stage of recovery, you might not be able to think that far in advance and that's okay. This might be something that you put off for a little bit later in your recovery. But these are gonna be things like learning another language, learning how to do a certain kind of dance, learning how to play a musical instrument, learning a certain sport, or maybe just fitness in general. Whatever your goals are, but usually it's maybe something that you're gonna be learning or something you're gonna be accomplishing long-term. Maybe you're in the process of transitioning out of a day job that's sucking your soul away and you wanna create your own business and you've told, told yourself, okay, in the next six months, I'm making this transition. So during the six months, I need to get my business off the ground so I can transition myself out of that job. 
So kind of like your monthly projects, what you're gonna do with your six month goals too, is you're gonna chunk those down into manageable chunks. You're gonna chunk those into months. So you know, six months is your goal. Maybe your goal over six months is to lose X amount of pounds. So you divide that by six months, and then you start to, to chunk down all the different things that you need to do that month. You need to go to the gym four times a week. You need to do good meal planning. You wanna do some juicing. You wanna get into more organic, freshly made foods instead of buying a bunch of processed garbage at the grocery store, which isn't gonna help you to reach those goals. So whatever that main goal is, you know, if it's your business, then you know this month this needs to take place, that month this needs to take place. You know, setting up the website, talking to vendors, creating an email campaign, like whatever your business is gonna be, you're gonna divide that all into the six months and then you're gonna take that and you're gonna start adding those into your monthly calendar and your weekly to-do list. So that's all copy and paste. You don't have to rethink of things. You've already done that planning. It's all written down and then you simply gotta copy and paste into your calendar and to-do list. When you write down your goals, as silly as that might sound, it helps you achieve those goals. You are much more likely to achieve a goal that you write down than one that you never write down and you just think about. Usually that's just like that, oh, someday kind of goal. But someday isn't a day of the week and that's not gonna happen. So you really wanna do this goal getting planning because it's gonna help you to achieve those goals that you want to achieve long term. Otherwise those six months is just gonna pass by and you won't have accomplished what you really wanted to accomplish. So write them down. You know, and again, if you're at the very beginning of your recovery, maybe you can't think six months in advance. Maybe you can think three months in advance. That's okay. Make these very simple goals. You know, the hygiene, maybe getting things with your doctor and therapy bills and all that organized. You got to deal with some kind of medical insurance or whatever. Maybe you have to make some calls for something to get yourself access to some kind of provider. Maybe you just moved and you need to get yourself unpacked and organized in the home and that just feels overwhelming right now. So if you give yourself these long-term goals, you know, over the month or over in this case, the six months, even when they're very basic things, that's going to help you. As silly as that might sound, when you're in that early stage, this will help you a lot. And number seven is meditation. And this is gonna help you with all of the above and so much more. This is when you're gonna slow down, you're gonna bring yourself present, you're gonna center, and you're gonna ground inside yourself. Meditation is like going inward. And it's gonna help you to create more of a stillness in your mind. At first it's gonna be very overwhelming because your mind is gonna be constantly thinking. There's gonna be so much that's coming up. A lot of people are like, well, I'm not good at meditation. Nobody is. <laughs> And that's the point. The point isn't that your mind is blank. That's not a human mind. There's always gonna be thoughts in your mind, but meditation helps you become aware of them. Helps you become aware of yourself, aware of your body. It's gonna help you download insights. The more you meditate, the more you get used to entering into that state. You know, maybe at first you have a formal sitting practice where Maybe you do some kind of guided meditation or you took some kind of class of meditation and you, you sit on a certain cushion or a certain area, maybe you like the chair, and that's always your meditation practice for you. But maybe you realize like maybe you have ADHD and it's really not good, for, like it's not helpful for you to sit still because you're just all over the place. So maybe you find moving meditation is helpful. So you do some stretches, some movements, it kind of looks like Tai Chi or some kind of martial art form like this. Qigong, and that becomes your meditation. Even though it's moving, you're still getting all the benefits. You're becoming present, you're becoming aware of yourself. Maybe you take your meditation out walking. I love to do that. So you're walking through the city or you're walking through nature, even better if you have access to that. And you're centering yourself, you're grounding yourself. You're not distracted by everything. You're not thinking about your grocery list and what you gotta do today. That's all taken care of. That's all written down somewhere. You don't have to waste your mind power thinking about that, you can just focus on being present with yourself in that moment. One of the easy, most basic ways to start meditating is just focus on your breath. It can be really that simple, just focus on breathing, inhaling and exhaling. That's gonna help you also become more aware of your self-talk. That's gonna help you become aware of those thoughts that you don't wanna keep having and keep rehashing in your brain. So you're gonna be able to get some insights on what you wanna start reprogramming. 
So maybe every time that thought comes by, that's your time to work on that reprogramming where you're unsubscribing from that old reality, from the narcissist reality. And you're reprogramming those negative thoughts into something positive. Maybe you sit down and all you can think about is, I can't do that, I'm not good enough. Like that's the abuse training, that's the abuse programming. So meditation is gonna help you become very aware of what those thoughts are, which is uncomfortable. But it also gives you the power then to transform those thoughts, to reprogram them. Some people like to do yoga as a form of meditation, you know, as long as it's not like the fitness form of yoga. You know, if you take yoga at a gym, oftentimes it's not like real yoga. It's more like this fitness class, you know, where you're got to kind of like show off to other people and doing these like powerful poses and everything and like they're way too advanced for you and they're moving you through this flow class that just feels like this intense uh, aerobic exercise more than something meditative. So find maybe yoga class that's more gentle yoga or yin yoga or restorative yoga or even kundalini yoga, something like that that's more relaxing, that's more still, that's more meditative for you. Another form of meditation that I love so much, I just got to do recently when I was in California. We don't have one here, I don't think. But you go into a flotation tank and it's total sensory deprivation. It's totally black in there. There's only 10 inches of water, but there's a thousand pounds of salt. And so you put in earplugs and you just lean back very gently and you're completely suspended in space and time. Like the water is completely holding you up. You're not touching anything. You're com it's like you're completely suspended in space and time. And it's like the most meditative experience you can have. And you'll become very aware of tensions in your body. It'll hurt a lot. Like I was feeling a lot of pain in my neck because I hold a lot of tension on that side of my neck. And so you practice relaxing that and relaxing that. And you'll get insights, you'll get downloads, you'll get into this in-between stillness kind of state. And they've actually done research with flotation and PTSD and found that it's very helpful for PTSD recovery. Another form of meditation that I love is laying in the grass. I don't really have that opportunity where I live right now, but if you do, I would highly recommend that. One of my favorite things to do in Peru was just to lay in the grass and watch the clouds. They had amazing clouds. And just laying there, feeling at one with everything was very meditative. You can even take your meditation, like I said before, with the mindfulness in the previous video, you can take that anywhere with you. You're standing in line, you're waiting on something. Normally, that's a very frustrating experience. So you can make it better by focusing on meditation instead. The reality is meditation is gonna help you in all areas of your life. It's gonna help your brain start to heal. It's gonna help you with the neurogenesis, the neuroplasticity um, as your nervous system is actually changing or creating new neural pathways by doing meditation. That, there's been scientific studies on that. Harvard did that study. So I highly recommend bringing that into your life. You know, Maybe you have five minutes a day, maybe you have 10 minutes a day, Maybe you really can't get yourself into that routine at the beginning, so maybe it's just a couple times a week. You are gonna notice the positive effects of doing meditation in your life. You're gonna become more productive at work. Things are gonna become more effortless and easy to deal with, even emotions that come up. And you're really going to help your brain heal after the abuse. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I highly recommend that you put these things into practice sooner rather than later. No matter what stage you're at in the recovery process, make it relevant to you at that point in your stage. So if this video was helpful for you, give it a like or let me know in the comments below. If there's something you wanna share in the comments, something I didn't mention or an insight that you got or some benefit that you got from putting one of these things into practice, leave that in the comments below because that can help someone else. I'm sending you a big hug.